Hello, hello. I think that was a problem. I think I forgot to add myself to the stream. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm such a, I'm such a, a, a boomer. <laughs> uh, hello, Wins. Jim, welcome. Uh, just let me know if there's any audio issues. Um, and, uh, yes, it's, so I'm just going to quickly try to go over space flight in 1959. Um, it's such a nice day out today. Oh my goodness. It is a glorious day. So I, I think I want to try to make this, uh, relatively fast, not, not, a, not a three hour deal. Uh, so we can have time to actually go and enjoy some sunlight that, uh, that the Lord has, has blessed us with. Um, so, yeah, 1959 is interesting. Uh, especially amongst the Soviets at the time. Uh, in early 1959, and also in late 1959, they succeeded in several lunar endeavors. Uh, namely, uh, in January of 1959, they uh, they launched one of their probes, which made it past the moon. Uh, now they meant to to uh, impact the moon, so that would have been the first time that a any human made thing, um, at least as far as we can know, uh, 
uh, has ever uh, went went up and, and touched the moon. Uh, and the Soviets uh, missed, but in doing that, their, their Lunar 1 uh, probe became the first object to leave Earth orbit. And it also left lunar, well, it was never in lunar orbit. Uh, and it just kept going. Um, now, when something keeps going and leaves the planet's orbit, it's still in orbit of the sun because everything is still relative to the motion of the center of your uh, your mass or your gravity or something like that. And um, let me... I'm going to do another quick audio check before I get it. Because so there's uh, just a, a, the the lunar launches that the Russians did. I really love how Stream Streamyard has closed my stream because uh, or closed my screen over there, just because I moved it over. Very very. That's not even what I wanted. Do, 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 do. Or is it? No, it's not. I don't even need that open anymore. Just a moment. I apologize. I'm trying to get all these. I just hooked a, hooked a second monitor up. And I'm just trying to get that straight and moving one thing over there and one thing over there. I can have a nice shot of my desktop. I'm going to put some. Um, I'm going to put some kind of background music that probably won't get flagged uh, for copyright. Um, while I blather, so I'm going to step away just for a moment. And I actually have some notes that are just out of arm's reach. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so yeah, so leaving 1958, going into 1959, and actually I do want to bring up another screen which has so all the space flight list, so we can just get an idea of all of the different things that were being launched in that year. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do all of them because there was probably over a hundred. Um, I am going to start with attempting to to do a, a lunar launch. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to demonstrate what is would basically happen if you just shot a, a rocket up, aimed straight at the moon as it is in the sky, and just tried to hit it like that, uh, which I, I it's not really going to work. And I'm going to try to demonstrate really quickly why that won't work. Uh, although you can probably guess it's because the moon is actually a giant object that's flying through space at a very large amount of speed. So anything that you're going to hurl at it, it you're going to have to, uh, to you're going to have to be good at math. <laughs> space flight in 1959. I just want to bring up that handy little list. I think giant space flight. Here we are. So January 2nd, 1959, we had the first Luna rocket. Um, so yeah, so coming out of 1958, by the way, um, I, I was looking some stuff up. In 1958, the average salary was $4,000. And with that, you could you could buy a house and, and, and raise a family. In 1958, four grand, the average yearly salary. Uh, pretty wild. Uh, the microchip had just been invented. Uh, hula hoops were just getting in style at that point, uh, and the Gibson V guitar had actually uh, became uh, invented and released. Um, and also at that point, I, I think I forgot to mention this, but in 1958, NASA uh, was uh, was created. 
as a as an organization. Um, previously, as I mentioned, there were the U.S. There's the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force. We're all doing their thing. Just like in today's world, we have the U.S. Space Force now. Well, back then they wanted to differentiate space to, uh, development um, from military. Uh, now you can argue and you can say, well, that's just optics. It's all military, uh, but that's not what the what the professed philosophy was back then. The NASA was supposed to be a civilian center of 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 uh, of, of the, this 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 department, um, kind of like the, the Coast Guard, I would imagine. I believe Coast Guard is still considered. Uh, not like non-military. Um, I could be wrong about that, but yeah. So NASA uh, also uh, some uh, cartoons. Uh, uh, Huckleberry Hound was introduced by Hanna Barbera. Uh, Yogi Bear which was the first time Yogi Bear appeared on TV screens. Um, Sir Edmund Hillary and his Arctic or Antarctic expedition had had just returned. Um, there was a, uh, a nuclear submarine called the Nautilus, which had uh, had floated underneath the North Pole and stayed under underwater for a super long time and, and broke some records, I believe. Um, it was like the first fully functional, fully demonstrated uh, nuclear s submarine. Nuclear submarine meaning that uh, prior to that, you had diesel fuel and you had electric. Uh, electric, which has batteries that are going to run out. And diesel fuel, obviously, which has fuel, which is going to run out. So uh, if you have a nuclear capable submarine, um, then that's theoretically can stay underwater for forever. As long as you can generate oxygen. Oxygen's not that difficult to generate when it comes down to it. Um, yeah. I also found it interesting. Uh, there were some race riots in, in Britain. Um, now, I, I don't know the details on that. Um, I would imagine, uh, I know at that time, um, a lot of uh, the West Indies, uh, like Jamaica was still a, a British colony at the time, I, I believe. Um, I think they didn't get their independence until 1964. Um, so probably had, uh, well, I think all of this stuff was building up to that. So that's something we often don't think about. Well, I mean, in, in a historical perspective, that there's nothing new under the sun, right? So yeah, so getting on to 1959. Um, yeah, just a couple of stuff, uh, or a couple of things that happened in 1959. Uh, we, we had like a, one of the first uh, round the world jet liners happening. And if you, if you ever look, if you look at a picture of it, um, it, it looks just like a normal modern day airliner that you get on and, and, and fly across the country on. Um, we had the Dalai Lama leaving, uh, fleeing rather from Tibet. Um, China takes it over. And also, uh, by 1959, now I'm not sure the exact date of it, but I know that the, the war had been happening for a while, but Cuba, um, was finally overrun by Marxist Leninists being led by Fidel Castro. Uh, prior to that, you know, it was run by an oligarchy, just like all the other places. So where you have tyranny, naturally, you're going to have communism coming up to fight it. And then that becomes its own thing to fight. And the cycle continues because uh, that's where we're at as a, as a society and as human beings until Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne. Um. Also, in 1959, uh, Khrushchev visited the United States, uh, and there was there was lots of a uh, sort of handshaking going on uh, between the Iron Curtain and and the West. A lot of smiles and winks, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, so looking at January 1959, we got Luna, and we got a uh, we have a Jupiter launch, not suborbital suborbitals. We have all suborbital launches, with the exception of luna here which luna one which attempts to get into lunar orbit now i didn't really test out this stuff i, I did sort of design this uh it's the only thing i designed from this year although i figured it might be kind of fun to try to do it just live just to kind of see what i can put together really quickly because this doesn't really look much like the actual luna one but 
again, the, the game doesn't give you stuff that's to scale. Um, I mean, it's got antennas on it. I put some some science. Uh, so this is very similar to the Sputnik rocket, uh, the RK or the R seven, and uh, now it now it has this extra stage on the top. Uh, so yeah, let me uh, let me try to fix up my staging real quick, and then let's just launch it. Let's, let's get the moon right above this thing, and let's launch it up and see how far off we are. Um, so this is going to be our first stage. It's going to ignite all of this. And then we're going to have our final. Where's this rocket? Right there. We're going to move that. Otherwise, we would have a big explosion, which might be kind of fun. But <laughs> And we need our separator right there. So we're going to separate and separate and ignite at the same time for that second stage. And we'll worry about these. Oh, let's see. Oh dear, that is our second stage. That's where we detach these four rockets, the side boosters. I don't know what this is supposed to do, I think. So yeah, this looks kind of bad. This uh, looks kind of cheesy, these, uh, whatever these are. But I tried to get, if you look at the real life, and it had something like this on it, this side thing. But I couldn't get one small enough. And I'm trying to do this with no mods, no visual mods. Again, the only mod I have on here is one that makes uh, weather and clouds. So... In fact, I'm going to save that so that, that configuration gets saved. So we're going to launch this uh, Luna 1. I think we might have to fast forward through some time. Um, and yeah, at this time, if we recall from last year, uh, the Navy was was launching uh, Thor Able rockets up and, and aiming at the moon. And, and trying to hit it as well, or trying to at least get into orbit of it. So at this point, they were they certainly had the moon in their sights. Um, as far as like, hey, we can we're we're able to launch stuff this high. Let's hit the moon. Like, what? Well, of course, we're going to try to hit the moon. Um, and I will be right back. Okay, that was an Amazon. Okay, so let's check where the moon actually is. I'm going to go to the main map. Here's all of our other satellites we've been launching. What was this one? This was the last one we launched. Uh, it was the first communication satellite. <laughs> Super eccentric orbit. Uh, so, again, I, I don't have any mods. That's, there's a mod that makes everything to scale of the real solar system. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And then I would want to try to make real probes. And I, I like slapping them together in the Kerbal style because it's kind of kind of makes everything sort of silly instead of like horrific if, if you end up crashing. Um, so here's the moon, M-U-N, the moon. Um, now in this game, uh, its altitude is 11 million miles away, I guess that would be, or 11 million, well, no, 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 11. How would I, how would that apply? I have no idea how that would uh, translate to to mod, but it's 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 pretty far, and I, it's just I know it's not the scale at all. I think 
the the way that the the real moon and the earth is much farther now in this game the, our little planet here actually has two moons minmus is the other one um, i'm going to ignore that one um, now if i want it to be more have it be more hard to do um i would probably head to minmus but i'm this the actual moon looks more like the moon and i'm just really trying to demonstrate the the physics of this uh not really the <laughs> trying to be that realistic um the entire solar system of this game by the way if i zoom out here's the orbit of our planet so it's not that unrealistic because we're still the third planet from the sun um we still have moho which is the mercury analog we have eve which is like venus here's the third which is us and then we have the mars analog which in this is called duna um and we're going to be launching stuff towards Mars and Venus, or Eve and Duna, uh, pretty soon. Uh, they they went for, for Venus very quickly, especially the Russians. The Russians really, uh, they landed a few things on Venus. Um, and then and then Mars. And then there's a nice space. Now, the next planet's out. Now here, this game has Dress, which this sort of represents sort of the, the asteroid belt, as far as I'm concerned. Because there's no real planet that this is anything like. This is just kind of like a, a giant rock. Um, but this is a gas giant jewel, which is like Jupiter and Saturn. So when I end up launching something that's supposed to go to Jupiter or Saturn, I'm going to launch it to Jewel instead. Um, now, Jewel has a whole bunch of, of really cool moons around it. So I can still I can work with that when I do the Galileo probe and the Cassini probe, which both went to Jupiter and, and Saturn, respectively. Uh, it doesn't have rings either. And then the really far out planet Elu is sort of like uh, Pluto. And and yeah, and like I said I, I'm I'm just now playing with this unmodded game, so I I have no idea how I'm going to end up building the stuff. But I think it's just going to be just some some of the fun part, just trying to figure out how to how to make this in game version of the real life probes. So anyway, so we're right here, and the moon is over there. So right now, if I launched, because let's say I launched straight up in the sky, you're gonna see the 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 ballistic arc. It's gonna you know as high as I can get, and I'm still not really sh too sure about the rocket's capability to get this high. So we'll see this time. I mean, sh I'm pretty sure we're good, but we'll, we'll see. But the time that it takes, so if, if I got this high up, this would take like hours or days to land. Because once you're once you've flown up that high, now as long as you're not you haven't gone into like a, a lateral trajectory <laughs> um, to get yourself into orbit, you're really just going up and going back down. Um, so unless you've gotten enough speed, because and also remember when you when you're launching something like this, um, all you're doing is adding energy in the form of speed to it. So the more the, the, the farther it's going, or the faster it's going, the more the, the rocket fuel is burning. It's adding energy, kinetic energy. That's just it's building up and building up. The only thing that's pushing back down on that which is building up is the the force of gravity itself and the wind drag as something is flying up through all the clouds and air. Um, but once it's through the atmosphere, there's nothing stopping it, so it's just going to keep going. Um, now it. Because well, once once the rocket's engine stops, there's nothing else propelling it. So all the energy it's stored up and built up in it is still there, and it will keep going. However, the force of gravity uh, of the planet itself is is going to still be pulling back on it, unless it had built up enough speed and force to go to be that which is higher than the force of the gravity pulling back on it. And that's where we say it would have reached escape velocity, and it just keeps going. And that's actually what does happen to the real life Luna probe, the first Russian lunar probe. Um, so I do want to, I'm going to think I just target. No, oh no, I can't make targets yet. In the game, I still have to unlock like the higher tech uh, radars and that sort of thing. So right now I can't like, everything has to be kind of guesswork. <laughs> Because uh, when you unlock certain things, you can actually create maneuver uh, nodes and then plan stuff out. And you actually, you can actually see it'll show you a predicted or predicted a uh, path that you can set. 
So I'm just going to fast forward it until I think the moon is right above us. If we were going to look up into the sky. And then we'll see how far how far off we are. Oh, so we're rotating the opposite direction. So we're going to have to... It's going to take a, a fast forward a little bit. Um, well. All right. That should be about good. So if I go back down on the planet, hopefully the batteries didn't die in this thing. <laughs> I should see the moon up in the sky somewhere. Yes, there's the moon in the sky. And so yeah, and technically, I mean, the way this game works, as far as this physics, it is a, a legitimate solar system simulator physics engines. So that this moon that I'm looking at up there is as far as the game is concerned, is there? If I launch something straight there without stopping, it's going to get bigger and bigger, and I'm going to reach it and be able to land on it or crash on it. <laughs> um, well, what did I just? What did I just do? Stuck in some kind of view, <laughs> apparently. I press the V. All right, that seemed to have worked. Oh. Anyway, let's. Uh, let's get more. about that loud loudness. There's the moon there. Now, I mean, we can't really. I mean, we can aim for it at this point, but it's going to be kind of. <laughs> So there's uh, there's there's kind of two different ways to get to the moon. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna launch straight up. I'm gonna keep watching until we we get our core left cross, which is coming up about now. Oh dear, what was that? So, okay, we're still we're still we're still operational. So you can do what's a what's called a direct transfer, or just a direct single stage, uh, or not single stage, but a direct. You're launching straight to the moon, straight up and straight there. Uh, the other way is you go into orbit first, which is called a parking orbit, and then you get your bearings, and then you then you launch off to the moon. Um, obviously, that's the right way to do it, um, but the early the early ways didn't do that. They didn't have all of the, they didn't have the time to be launching uh, stuff into orbit first and then figuring out if they could relaunch or reignite a rocket in order to, uh, to ignite it again. So, okay, so this is as high as we have gotten with just that. And that's, let's see, how high up is that? According to looking down here, we're going to get about. 600 miles up in the air just from that it's not really a lot hmm. i wonder if i didn't have a lot of fuel i could have added more fuel now on the fast forward again eventually so as you can see we just have this giant ballistic arc i didn't try to orbit the planet i just tried to go straight up as high as we can get we're not anywhere near as uh, high as we should be. Now I can, we do have a second rocket because at this point, uh, well, matter of fact, I have no reason not to. Oh dear, what's just happened? Oh, there we are. Something just, uh, <laughs> well, here's the rest of our, oh, I don't have a good probe on here. Something didn't. Something exploded. Something didn't go right. But this thing is still works, and I can still move it. So aim for the moon. Not. I can't really aim too well. Slow it down. I'm not sure what happened. I'm gonna deploy this. So yes, yeah, so we have this second stage, which, well, I shouldn't have. 
they didn't know if they could reignite the rockets, so they would just they would always just put a second stage on there. So just with that little burn I just did on this second stage rocket, you can see I've added a lot of altitude. Now if I can actually slow this thing down, which there's a little cheat because if I do the time warp, I can. Something went terribly wrong on here because I thought I had a a probe core that actually allows me to have stability assistance, but I don't. So at this point, the only thing giving me anything is uh, I, mean, I assume I have some sort of reaction wheel which operates by gyroscopic motion. This is tell the, the computer which direction it's facing and which direction it's not facing, and it makes corrections by how fast it spins and whatever. This you can see it's pretty much impossible to control. I'm going to aim it for the moon as best I can and stabilize the direction it's facing. And then I'm going to burn the rest of its fuel and we'll see how far it gets. Okay. Alright, I'm going to slowly crease it up. We're going to watch how far our this gets see even at the, I'm I'm burning at the, the slowest rate of fuel, um, but because I'm already going, because I'm out of the atmosphere, so I, I'm going like two thousand meters a second. I mean, I'm going super fast right now. You, you can't tell, except for I'm I'm going away from the planet. There's no wind stopping me. I'm in space at this point. I'm about six hundred miles up. Um, so even this small burn is just making me go faster and faster and faster. Because um, even if I stop this rocket, I'm going to keep going that fast. Nothing is going to stop me from going that fast ever again until I hit something or until I turn this thing around and burn the rocket in the other direction, known as a retro burn. And look, I'm already, I'm, ar I'm almost to the moon in itself. Ooh, I'm actually in the wrong, you can see I'm in the wrong uh inclination however i would have to make a course correction but i don't think that's going to happen so the real life one did leave earth orbit so let's see how i'm boosted that rocket and there we go so that's going to go out now it, it will leave now theoretically it, this will return back to 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 the planet one day but at this point it, it's left and it's very doubtful that it's going to actually well it, it will it, the game will not forget this thing so even if i play this for another like couple years uh into the game or in, or in the game itself another few decades uh this this thing will always be floating around the sun um to make it to make a future mission to go and try to retrieve it oh, that'd be pretty impossible um, so I'm actually going to separate here. Here's the actual probe. <laughs> Something. Well, all right. I'm going to log some pressure data. Atmospheric pressure while high in space over Kerbin. The instrument reads zero as if it were in a vacuum. All right. I'm going to transmit that data. And that is taken away or electric charge so we've just transmitted data uh, from space to to our home planet which is what this thing is going to do all i have on here are pressure or no i do have a temperature thing but this wasn't for just measuring temperature in space it was for measuring near the moon let me actually fast forward it to where i get relatively close to the moon All right, where's the moon as I'm floating around here? Oops, that's not it. There it is. So I'm going to hit the fast forward, and it fast forwards really quick in space. You can see us getting closer. Closer and closer. You know what I should have done? I should have looked up how close the real Luna 1 actually got to the moon and tried to do that, but that's okay. So at some point, I'm going to have to crash into that thing. <laughs> Which 
which I might need to, in order just to get it done quickly, I might need to uh, unlock in the game the uh, maneuver nodes. We'll see what happens. So yeah, we're just going to go right past the moon there. Pretty far from our planet. And yeah, the moon's already... It's done with us. It's already gone that direction. At this point, we're, we're even losing our signal, I believe. Yeah, because eventually, like, the game would actually make you uh, build a SATA a communication network. Because uh, the, the signals, unless you, especially or the early uh, relay signals from the, the the equipment that you get to to mount onto these these uh, satellites that you're building, um, they only they only transmit so far. So you can make like communication satellites, that sort of thing. So you could really s simulate uh, a good deal with this. And then there are modifications that you can make that are made by players that that add uh, all kinds of levels of realism. Um, so yeah, that's that's what happens there. If you just try to launch something straight up to the moon, you're probably going to miss it. But if you have enough, if it's enough to get that to keep burning and to get you that close, um, once you're already in space and you're burning your fuel, it, it's uh, it's not too much more to just miss the moon and keep going out, and because uh, that's what they did. <laughs> And this thing was adios. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna let's just let's let's watch it until it leaves the Earth uh, or Kerbin influence, the sphere of influence, as it were. Goodbye. And now it's just it's now it's still in orbit around the sun, so it's just left the Kerbin. Now it's its own. It's basically become an artificial planet. It's no longer an artificial moon. It's an artificial planet. And it's even class it's, it's classified as that. The first artificial planet is Luna 1. Because <laughs> now it, alongside of the other planet, Mars, Ju Jupiter, and Venus, and Earth, it's in the same type of orbit, the heliocentric orbit. And all right, so we're going to say bye to Luna One. Um, the other, uh, there's not too many wild launches this year. Um, we had uh, we have Luna. There's a couple Titan launches. Uh, there's a Vanguard launch. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm going to do these because um, they're, they're basically just general satellite launches. I've already demonstrated the launch of a satellite. So Um, Pioneer four, uh, the discovery satellite. So I might try to, I, I might actually do, but before I go on to, to actually try to, to crash one of these into the moon, um, I was looking through this. A lot of these are just test launches, um, where they, they launch the Atlas straight up to see how high they can get it. Um, and, uh, and as you can see, they, they, they did this quite a lot. Uh, the air force, the Navy, um, lots of suborbital launches with, with, uh, with uh, basically a lot of them are test um, nuclear weapons. Um, here's one launched from a battleship. Uh, so uh, actually, is that what that is? Oh no, wasn't launched from a battleship. <laughs> I know there at some point around here they were also launching stuff from underwater. Uh, all right, Discoverer 1, first spacecraft to be placed into polar orbit. 
All right, so this is what I want to do. So I'm, I'm going to create a Thor Agena. So I already have a Thor rocket design. Um, and if you may recall, the Thor rocket was the uh, the originally an intermediate range ballistic missile uh, to supplement for the the other uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that they couldn't move around fast enough. So the intermediate range, they could fit into air, airplanes and, uh, and, and send them off overseas and set them up, uh, I guess, relatively quickly. Uh, they're still liquid fueled, which means they still take a lot of time to prep up with uh, their, their liquid oxygen it has to be highly refrigerated and that sort of thing. And you have a lot of burn off and, and uh, liquid fuel uh, nuclear weapons that need to be ready to be launched at any time uh, were not ever really efficient. Um, which, and again, you, you, that's why you still have a lot of the development in the solid rocket uh, launch vehicles, such as the Minuteman. And even to this very day, if we, if we use a, you know what? I, they might be retired. Minuteman 3, um, up until recently at least. I know there's another kind of which the name is eluding me. Uh, so yeah, so Thor, now we already had a Thor Able rocket. Now, Able rocket was the top half of a Vanguard rocket. At this point, you know, whatever worked, they were slapping rockets together. That's the way rockets work. Just slap them together. That's that's rocket science. <laughs> um, well, in a Gina rocket, um, I haven't designed one of those yet. Now, the Gina is interesting because later on during the Apollo, uh, or no, I'm sorry, during the Gemini missions, uh, one of the things that they needed to test was to make sure they could rendezvous in space with another with another uh, object in space. So, like, this photograph was taken by uh, by either Neil Armstrong or one of those guys um, that were actually up in one of the uh, the Gemini things. Because um, at first they launched this thing um, on its own rocket, on its own Thor, and they uh, they got it up into a certain orbit, and then when, then they launched the Mena. But I'm getting way ahead of, way ahead of ourselves. But I just wanted to check out how big one of these things is, and make sure that it's a what kind of thrust, 21 kilonewtons. So it's not even really that powerful an engine. So Thor Agena, and apparently it's just two stages. It's the Thor, which originally was the IRBM. And then the Agena, so two stage, two stage rocket. And the goal here is going to be polar orbit. Because um, yeah, once you can get something in a polar orbit, you can pretty much get yourself into any orbit. Because polar orbit is 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 not. Uh, not very easy. Although orbiting itself isn't very easy when it comes down to it, and as far as the, the amount of fuel that it takes. Like ro the rocket fuel in the Soviet Union, uh, a lot of it was actually made by potatoes. And uh, there was like a massive shortage from it, supposedly, of food, of, of at, least, at least that type of food that they used uh, to create the rocket fuel with. Um, so, yeah, we're going to move off of the Soviet rockets. Um, they were still launching their R7s, uh, doing their their tests for uh, for their nukes, making sure that they could uh, wipe out the Capitalista. So I'm going to go to my Thor Able. That looks so, so bad. So this Able part I'm going to get rid of, and we're going to replace that with a, a Gina. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call the Agena. I'm not really worried about it. All I know is we got to get rid of that. The middle part. So the Agena is just a single stage. If I'm not mistaken, I just looked. And it kind of says that it includes a variant with solid rocket boosters. No, I'm not going to. I think this is just simply it is what it is. Single stage upper rocket that's fine 
Oh, what did this thing look like? The Discover. So the Discover One. Um, oh yes, this is the Corona program. Yes, I do remember this because I remember this is. If you look it up, like nowadays, you're going to look up find a bunch of other stuff for it. Um, they named it Discover One because it's actually a spy satellite, but they they named it that to make it sound less less uh, spooky, I guess. By calling it Discoverer. Um, looks like pretty. Oh, the, uh, Canada's first satellite. It's a satellite in 1962. was launched on one of these things as well. Interesting. All right. So anyway, let me just get a simple Agena rocket going then. Which is going to be... Um, Look like a simple, smaller fuel tank. Let's get our little kind of fuel tanks we have available. I think. I'm wondering if that's too. Yeah, that's probably the right size. I don't know. Let's. I don't want to get all uh, get all crazy with it. That's a, might be a better size. Just so we can make sure we're going to get into orbit. Uh, so, yeah, so they had these spy satellites. And the way, I, if I recall, the way they retrieved the film in the cameras um, is they, had, they flew an airplane by, like, these things had parachutes on them. And they flew an airplane by them and caught them. The, the plane uh, had a hook going behind it. And they caught the thing in midair. And as far as I understand, they, they caught a few of them. Um, do I have any science that it kind of works like a camera at all? Not really. Well, retrieving this stuff will give us science. We'll pretend that's a camera. It's actually a barometer. <laughs> I could slap this giant, and that's too big. That's too big. All right. Uh, kind of even need, need an engine on that agenda there. Actually, they don't need that. This get this thing can go. Now, from the looks of it, the Agena engine wasn't too powerful. So I'm going to need something that's going to scale okay. I could just give it the, the swiveling gimbal. Hmm. Yeah, might as well. I'm going to give it a reaction wheel for better control. We're going to make that look like that. We're going to push that up into that. We'll probably make that look a little prettier, but I'm not worried about it at the moment. This is going to be our Thor Agena. We're going to call it Thorn. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to call it Athena. That's not really like original. It's like okay, it's just another name. Um, hmm. uh, just call it the Aria. Whatever it has an A. It starts with an A. Not original either, but. Thorn Agena. Agenda. There we go. Since it's a spy satellite instead of Agena. Thorn Agenda. <laughs> okay. Um, where did that, was that launched from? The first spy satellite. Re reconnaissance satellite. Vandenberg Air Force Base. That's what I thought. So we're going to launch this guy from a 
ね。Yeah, why not? We're the creator launch site. I, haven't, I've not, I don't think I've ever. Actually, no, I've never launched from here before. Not even sure what it's going to look like. Oh, that's pretty. That's not what Vandenberg Air Force Base looks like. <laughs> Vandenberg is a is a desert. Am I even on the equator that much? I yeah, kind of am. All right, let me not let that bother me. All right, so I'm going to check my staging. So we got the first stage. That's going to ignite, and this is going to separate. And then after a while, this is going to... So... Do I even have a separator? I forgot to put a separator. Oh, dear. Uh, that would have been bad. River to vehicle assembly. <laughs> we'll have to remedy that. <laughs> Do, 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 do. We need a decoupler. There we go. Simple as that. That's going to well off with that. Good. And good. Well, I still want to know what this thing looked like. The Discoverer 1. Oops. Huh. Vanguard 2. <laughs> ah, where's it at? Vanguard balloon. See, see, they were launching all kinds of stuff up there. Putting balloons up in space. They tried to put the balloon actually in orbit. Hopefully they were testing for radiation. Episode five where they did this. Discover one. Oh, this is just in a genus A stage. Does this thing have a separate stage? Uh oh, I shouldn't have looked at that. Thor Agena A. Am I missing something here? I want to make sure I'm not missing another stage. Gina. Should be able to find a cutaway. Here we go. No, that's it. I'm just, all right, I'm just being stupid. Let me stop just being stupid. It's just a game. <laughs> Although I think I made this sort of too large. Whoops. Is what I'm worried about. Like, that's way too much. Or it's supposed to be a secondary booster rocket. Um, I don't really have a lot to work with though, except for just this guy. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more to scale with the real one. Because already this this Thor rocket is humongous. I think I probably should shave off a whole other tank there, but I'm not going to do that. At this point, I'm just worried about getting it done. And the engineering of, of it is not as important as uh, just demonstrating the physics of it. So, Thor agenda. I'm going to launch it from the desert. That's more Vandenberg-like. I think if I'm watching like a Japanese one, it will go from that, that one I was just on. Should probably put a couple more of these so it's not wobbling like that. All right, so we're going to try for a polar orbit. That's around, I'm going to aim for the North Pole. 
and we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Oh boy. <laughs> this is mucho slow. Oh, I'm, so I need to start tilting this to the north. Is the north? I think my probe is on not in the right way. All I know is we got to go up. <laughs> so I'm there. Is it really just a matter of going that direction? Let's try it. I'm going to tilt here. Right, tilt in this direction instead of where we normally would, if, as if we were going to go around the equator planet. Instead, I'm going to go up 100 degree. Whatever it's supposed to be. Normally, I, I, I don't really, I, I know how to do this stuff up, up to a point, but as far as like making sense of the, the numbers of it, no, I'm, I'm no good at that. <laughs> so we've made it up a good distance. About 20 miles so far. Or as the analog of this planet goes. 30 miles. We're, just, we're gaining speed and energy. Because again, this is just the buildup of kinetic energy. Uh, once we actually leave the fullness of the atmosphere, uh, there's no more stuff to slow us down. And then the more you're burning, the more you're just increasing by your speed and building up more and more energy. So that once you're, if, if just like with that last one, if we were just off flying through space, you're still going to always be going that same speed. Nothing's going to ever stop you. That speed is this is energy built up until you actually hit something, and then that, then that energy will will transfer to whatever you hit and probably destroy it. So we got this guy. Let's see what our orbit's looking like. So it needs to be going up and down, which it is. Oh, I actually seem to be facing south instead of north. That's a big mess up. But either way, we're still going to be in orbit. And you can see our... All right, I'm going to slow this down a bit. So what's happening is I'm getting too fast, too, too shallow, too low. So by the time my speed gets to orbital speeds, I'm still too low here. I should I should throttle up the, the engine uh, a little better because you can see what's happening with my orbit. Um, I'm going way out now. I think this first one was actually in a super eccentric orbit anyway. They all, a lot of them were like because they they all made or, you know they made the mistakes uh, in the early in the early days on this kind of stuff. This was in a 163 kilometer by 968 kilometer orbit. So yeah, the, the, the real one was in also in a crazy eccentric orbit. So, but yes, this, but from this thing's perspective, so I went up. So that's interesting that this is actually south. <laughs> Whoops, thought it was north. I can, I think with the little bit of fuel that I have, and just another reminder, I, they they did not turn off and turn back on the engines, especially in flight, like I'm doing here. But next to uh, doing this over and over again. Let me get to this, what we're about. Fast forwarding it. So I'll, actually, I'm just going to wait till I'm at the Apo apps which is the highest point. So this is really high up, much higher than... Uh, <laughs> well, I might as well tip over the orbit now.
planet. <laughs> oh, there it is. That's how high up we are. <laughs> All right, as you can see, this side is getting a little bit larger because of the what direction I'm facing. Uh, it's causing this side of my orbit to change. So now I'm up 100 by, okay. So as long as I'm up past 70, and I'm at 140 periapsis, so I'm, so it's 2 million by 140, basically. I guess that's supposed to be 200,000. Yeah, 200,000 by 140. So that's a super eccentric orbit, but that's fine. It's good enough for, for government government work. So yeah, so we're going to decouple. And here we are. Here's our spy satellite. Now we are we are in a polar orbit, apparently. Let's, let's double check that. Yes. So we're going up and down. Now the, the good thing about a polar orbit is... As you are, are orbiting the planet up and down, the planet is rotating back and forth, uh, left and right. So at any given time, if you have a strong enough camera that you can look back down at what you're seeing, um, if you're going you're gonna to get a view of the entire Earth at some point as you're spinning around in your uh, your polar orbit. So let's just let's wait till this guy gets closer. That's a really crazy orbit again. Look at our nice little Aurora Borealis looking down at the South Pole. Oh, you know what I forgot on this thing? is how I was supposed to get this thing back down. Unless the Agena rocket... Some, You know what? I should probably have put more, more research into that. Because, <laughs> again, you're supposed to get back the reconnaissance... Uh, stuff but that's what test launches are for but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep that as it is that's well, wait did i have a radio on this thing log data no comm devices oh geez okay well, we have something in polar orbit, and that, that was the goal. Um, oh, there was a, there was some other ones put there. There was Discoverer 1. Oh, was that a Titan? Discovery 2. Wait. Wait, wait. Let's look back through 1959. We have Pioneer... Partial launch failure. Pioneer 4 does a lunar flyby. Well, that's interesting. All right, so we just did... No, I mean, this clearly here says Discoverer 1 on an Thor, Thorogena. That's what we just did. In a low Earth polar orbit. In March 1959, we have a Juno 2 rocket launching Pioneer 4. Now, if anybody's ever seen Star Trek... Four, no, Star Trek Five. Um, the very beginning of that has a Klingon destroying Pioneer Ten. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is Pioneer Four. Second stage burned for so it was supposed to. What it's supposed to do? Stay spin stabilized. It's supposed to do a lunar flyby, but yeah. So it said that the the second part was stuck, and. Uh, and it will flew too too far. Pretty much the same thing that Luna 1 did. So this is what Pioneer 4 looked like. Huh. I think I can I think I can handle that. Now the Juno 2 rocket is pretty much the same thing that Man, look at that stuff. Look, let's get down to back to our space center here. We got 330. I kind of want to try to be done by four. I 
Uh, so the Juno 2 rocket is what was also used for the Explorer. Well, actually, wait a minute. Juno 1, Juno 2. Getting, am I getting them mixed up? I don't want to get those mixed up. I'm going to have to lose my nerd credentials. Um, Juno 2. Yeah, that's a little different than, yeah, the Juno 1. Well, I'll just have to make some improvements if I need to. Because it's the same, basically the same rocket. It's just it has a. Uh, I can, I can see that this is a little more streamlined here. I'm sure there's there's I'm sure there's a lot more. Uh, but the basics are the same. We have the second and third stages are, are the solid rocket, uh, engines. That are clustered together, eleven clustered, three and then one. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much the same. As far as all these in, our intents and purposes are. Um, what did I do with that? That was. So I do. Yes. So I know what I'm going to do. In order to differentiate the types of rockets, I am going to take off these stages. And I'm, go I'm still going to have their, their next stages be solid. But instead of the clusters, I'm just going to use these. So we're going to use that for the first one. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I think I am. Whoops. Yeah. I need a separator. Let's grab a stack separator. Because our actual, our new moon, this is going to be it, the pioneer right there. But that's good enough to fly by the moon. We'll put a science on there. All right, that's one. Another stack separator. And now we're going to put another, a larger. This is just going to take the place of our clusters. That one. The real one looks look streamlined therefore i am going to put an adapter there we go hmm. you know what wasn't that streamlined like that because there was a shroud hmm. let's change that because i want to cover this up with a payload fairing. Uh, so we're going to hit that. There we go. Hmm. Still think the scale is, well, the scale is way off, but that's fine. I think we have enough to get it to fly fly out of fly in the heliocentric orbit along with i wonder if they i mean i would imagine that the scientists or the people behind this mission knew you know i would wonder how much we actually knew about what the soviets were doing like I, i'm sure we would have been able to detect such a launch um or had spies in place um but a lot of times, the, the, the general Soviet public was not aware of what missions were being conducted. Uh, where about 
in the U.S. We usually did them like Cape Canaveral was well, that's where NASA became the civilian place. So people were open to go and take pictures and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so we're just going to launch this towards the moon as well, just like the Luna one. There's the moon. Let me make sure I am facing it. Looks like I'm going to have to. It's going to be during the day. Interesting. All right. So at this point, can I see the moon in the sky during the day like this? Oops, I forgot to check the staging. We're going to go down at the bottom uh, for that first launch. Uh, we need that guy. Uh, that's it. The rest of them are this rocket, this decoupler. I am missing a decoupler. Oh my goodness. Revert. <laughs> Come on, it's not rocket science. Can't forget the decouplers. I don't like that because of the scale, but I want it to look a little bit more like it, <laughs> which means I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to just uh, add Add this for the radio. I'm going to flip it on its side. Make sure it's not sticking out too much. Uh, we already got a science on there. Got a stack separator. I mean, that's pretty much all it's going to be able to do. Give it a little bit more batteries. Oh, might as well try to keep it balanced. Oh, but beyond that, I wanted to add a, a shroud, a payload fairing around that. just to get it more protection. Keep that like that there. It looks a little silly, but I didn't want it to be perfectly uh, well, actually I can put a Alright, let me check my staging once more. We got our main rocket. That's going to go up there. We're going to have a stack separation, and then that's going to go off. Then we're going to have another separation of this one, and then this is going to go off. In the meanwhile, those shrouds don't really matter. That's not going to matter. This one will only matter at the ending, so we'll just save that towards the ending. Let's save that, and let's get it launched. Where did this launch from? Cape Canaveral, looks like. All right, so our 1959 US lunar flyby attempt, Pioneer 4.
All right, let's just move us around to where the moon is again. Which is just going to fast forward us to where we are. Facing it fairly well. And we're just going to try to launch straight up. Make sure it stays facing up. I really just want to try to make it leave the, uh, we'll go into heliocentric orbit. And as we're watching from planet scale, all the way down, we can see this ballistic arc rising up through the atmosphere. Because of the planet's rotation, it's always going to arc in that direction naturally. If you just try to go straight up, it's always going to at least go in that direction somewhat. Now, again, I'm not trying to go into orbit, so I'm not really going off on a, on a sideways lateral trajectory. I'm just going up and up. And well, the moon is actually up there somewhere. Natural eclipse. So I'm going to give it a look, couple seconds to leave the, the, the atmosphere a little more until it gets to 70,000. We're not quite clear. Then I'm going to do a separation. Matter of fact, let's just do it. Now that we're using solid fuel, so that is not able to. I can't do anything now, so we're just waiting for it to burn out. Now it's burned out. Should be able to separate our probe now, or just open it up. Now the moon is about that direction from this. I'm going to have to I can barely see it. And so see, I still can't until I unlock the special radar towers and stuff on the back on the, the planet, I'm not going to be able to really target this thing properly. Let's put it in the camera in the free mode aim. I'm just going to try to aim for the moon as best I can. I mean, this is totally not going to. I'm in the same situation we were with Luna. All right, just, I'm just going to do another burn. And so this is our final burn. And that's just going up and up and away from the planet. Again, it's just all it's doing. It doesn't look like we're ch changing much. But in reality, we are going meters and meters and meters per second faster by second, by the second. If we're going so much faster, it's just impossible to tell because we're not in any air. And here we can see our height just increasing. And don't know if we're going to clear the gravity of the planet at this point. This might not actually work. Nope. That's as high as we're going to get with that. That is unfortunate. So we're going straight up. And straight down. It's kind of curious. Uh, yeah, I don't have. I can't do maneuver nodes, so I can't really tell. Is this going to tell me how long it would take? No. Time to reach. See, that's locked because I still have to unlock the thing. Probably within the game, it's just a day or a few hours it could take to go all the way up and all the way back down. In which case, there's no heat heating on this or shielding on this, so it will be destroyed. So. We're just, we'll follow through with that. We'll just go all the way up. There we go. Well, 
I know there were lots of failed. I mean, this is discover. This is supposed to be Pioneer Four, so just because this is a failed Pioneer mission, whoop. Um, this is actually going to be Pioneer Two or Three. <laughs> So I'm not that worried about it. I'm not going to lose any. My Kerbals aren't going to lose any sleep over it. This guy plunges back in to the atmosphere. I guess technically, if I fast forward it, that would have been an hour and a half of, of going up and down. But everything in this game is scaled down. I will return momentarily. Lo, I have returned. Apologize for that. Um, here's the stuff we have sitting in orbit so far. Actually, some of these are the booster rockets. 
and not a, actually a probe. I just happened to stick a probe type of device in it to track it. Vanguard rocket, our loony probe, which is currently, where is that? Orbiting the sun, as it were. There it is. Um, did we never name? Well, it was a secret one anyway. The one that we were orbiting the the, the polar orbit. That's what I'm thinking. I apologize. <laughs> so yeah, so this this year is basically going to be uh, mainly attempting to to again hit the moon, and then polar orbits seem to be the order of the the order of the day. Um, so I, did our polar orbit die? I don't see. Oh, no, is that wait? Oh, that's a relay. Zero. Well, the one that I just did is kind of missing. Well, something happened to it. Is it marked as debris? Oh, I'm not going through all that. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking of the the Thor agenda, agenda. I think that's just I didn't name it. Okay, I'm stupid. Let me stop looking at that. It's causing me to space out. <laughs> um, I did just upgrade the tracking station because um, I think I would probably be sitting here for maybe a couple more hours trying to manually uh, maneuver these really pr primitive rockets uh, into the moon without uh, any kind of ability to do any sort of computer tracking. <laughs> so this would be the equivalent to have an army of people sitting there with, with slide rulers because uh, they didn't have calculators back back then. The, the people themselves were calculators. <laughs> they had a whole bunch of people sitting there checking each other's work, uh, that sort of stuff. Quite remarkable. However, that being said, I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't put a version of the Pioneer into heliocentric orbit, which means I need to improve upon this. So it's like I have room to add fuel to some of this, which I'm going to do. Oh, that's about it. I think I might add another different booster here Ooh. you know what yeah I'm just going to do that I'm gonna add a larger booster usually not gonna do this but this the Juno rocket doesn't I mean it evolves pretty quickly oh, what am I looking at here engine fuel tanks Oh, we want an engine. We want a solid engine. Yes, we're going to change that there. We're going to put this here. Uh, so that's what that's going to look like now. <laughs> this is going to be our version of the, the Jupiter or the Juno 2. Um, I don't have the ability to cluster. Uh, not well. I suppose I could. Now nah, that wouldn't. That would. It wouldn't make any sense to try it like that. Let's just cluster these things together like crazy. So let's just see how this goes. All right. Let me check my staging again. So there's my first thing. Um, here's our second. We need a separator. All right. There's no separator here. Let's switch it here. Whoopsie. Come on. That's going to separate, and that's going to go off. And then this is going to separate, and that's going to go off, and then that's going to separate, and then we got this thing. What's 
do it. Alright, I'm going to move it back so we don't quite get that loudness. Oh yeah, I do want to see how close I can get it to the moon in general. Oh, and I should have maneuver nodes now or of some type. Let's fast forward this until I am I can set it as a target now. Oh, I didn't want to focus the view. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to target the moon. Man, just now that I can do that with this. I still, there's, I can't set in it, set it in the computer, but I can at least see it marked. Um, it looks like the battery has died in this rocket. <laughs> um, instead of redoing all that, I'm going to do infinite electricity real quick, just enough to start it up. Is that going to work, or is it going to... Oh, no. My rocket ran out of fuel. I mean, ran out of battery. Wait, wait, wait. No? There we go. Okay. The electric is recharged. Let me undo that. I'm going to try to do that to really cheat. But at that point, the only difference it would have made is uh, switching back and then waiting a couple minutes to for the moon to get with above me again. And these, these launches were straight from launching straight into the moon. Uh, rather than uh, any kind of uh, getting into a parking orbit first and then and then waiting to launch off into the moon because that was not within their capability yet. Right, let's just... Could just keep it pointed to the moon the entire time. It doesn't. It's not really going to work this way because there's the amount of time it's going to take. Even after I build up as much velocity as I need to to make it as far as that moon is away from me. Um, there's still the case of time as well as the space. <laughs> Oh no! That didn't work too well. I'll just become a missile. I hope it doesn't land on a village. <laughs> We're just going to let it, uh, that's a, it's a Kerbal tragedy. Oh, well.
I wonder if I should have just kept the clustered rockets in there. Let's see. So the change that I had just made, which is added this, and then put this in a different spot. So let me change, I change it to the configuration that I know works. But, all right, I'll try not to make this too quick. I mean, <laughs> oh boy. Um, I need, so here's how I'm gonna do this. One central. <sighs> I'm going to need, come on, what am I looking for? Here we go. Basically a few of those in order to, I'm gonna need a stack separator because what I'm trying to do is cluster the rockets uh, just like the other ones where I might just, re you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna reload the previous Juno. Well, might as well just do the Explorer one again. Because the change I made there is I'm going to add all the, make sure all the fuel is in all of these, which looks like it is. Nope, right there. Maybe there is one. There's got to be something I can do with this that's going to to make this be able to get farther far enough to launch this thing outside of the Earth's. Uh, so we have, we have a reliant. It may even be that removing fuel does let it go farther. Interesting. But what I originally was going to do, so that I'm not just sitting here staring at this thing, is add more rockets. <laughs> Such as here. Hold on. We put more there. And also, <laughs> well, why not? Let's just do it. <laughs> I didn't improve the uh, the probe either. Oh well. I can rename it the Pioneer. <laughs> That is, I want to have that probe in the game, uh, some version of it, so that it's historically there. So that whenever I have the game load it, every probe that's that's somewhere is, is actually has an analog in real life. This thing is ugly. I don't think it's going to be aerodynamic. I do need to fix this staging. Yeah, we've gone into the land of ridiculousness now. Well, let's see what happens with this. Maybe with some proper staging, it'll. That's our bottom one. It almost makes me tempted to, to just. Uh, cause there, there, there is the mods that where you can shrink these things down and do all this stuff with it. But once I start doing that, then it's like you might, as, you might as well download the actual real version of the spacecraft and I, I like trying to now this is just ridiculous here but this is the last kind of version of this type of spacecraft where they, they did it where they did this because they were still experimenting with with how they were going to ignite 
reignite the the rockets at the upper level of the atmosphere um and so that's why they had all th these clusters of solid rocket um fuels you can watch from warner von braun talking about it um and plus once they had built them they built a bunch of them so they had to use them anyway or they were going to use them um so what's this last one there and there so there's our clusters all right let's get this show on the road Forgot to wait for the moon. Let's see how this even goes. <laughs> so we're going to launch straight up. Let's take a look at our ballistic. Oops. Our ballistic arc. we got to make this stuff disappear so we can see anything. Where are we at? So our ballistic arc here is... Pretty small, still going up. It's amazing this thing is even. I mean the 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 thrust. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. There goes our rocket. It's all right. We're going up. <laughs> Apolapse is rising. And this is the last bit as we have our last stage and we're going to go up past 200 miles so we're not really that high yet Oh. All right. Well, that barely worked, but that certainly worked. And it's interesting because at one point that actually did hit, it did cross within uh, the influence of one of these other bodies, but that is going to leave, it's going to escape in eight days it's going to take. Uh, the separator. Well, wow. I'm going to fast forward that eight days and we're going to watch what that looks like. So basically we just kept going up and up and increasing our speed, increasing our speed, increasing our altitude, increasing the energy behind the altitude. To where this the faster we're going to go so once we're out of fuel again there's nothing stopping us there's nothing expend expending the energy that we've just created from from boosting ourselves out of the atmosphere now if we didn't boost ourselves enough to be stronger than the gravity of the force of the entire planet um which is what gravity is, which is what terminal velocity is, which is why everything that falls uh, falls at the same 
the same rate no matter no matter what because it just has to do with the the gravity body um the difference that, but I mean, the reason why a feather and a and a hammer look different when you drop it on earth is because of the the uh the air the feathers going to get caught on the, the wind and slowly fall down all right so this thing is well on its way um and i forgot to aim it at the moon but before, before the, the the last thing i'm going to do it's already it's after four o'clock so i didn't want it to go back much much past that but the very last thing i'm going to do then is 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 i, I definitely want to crash something into the moon um because my thumbnail is the big thing of the moon and one of the things that the russians did do is uh is they got a spacecraft around the moon to, in order to photograph the other side of it. Um, so, I don't know if I'm going to end up doing that. Well, I'm not going to revert this flight. So, let's return to this space center. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to do the, 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 the lunar program that that crashed the that did the first impact of the moon and let me take a look at the list of 1959 space flight so yeah so we just kind of did pioneer 4 um, launched it out into a heliocentric orbit uh huh, i didn't quite do a lunar flyby but close enough <laughs> uh, we see another british launch a skylark missile we see some French launch stuff uh, 77 miles up. Veronique. French launched something uh, 100 miles up. So the French was doing their own uh, sort of science experiments. Into March, we have more Thor, more uh, Atlas rockets launched up. Up into space, 320 miles. The Russians are doing their thing. Uh, going into April... We have another Discoverer 2 satellite. Those are the ones, the Discoverer satellites were the spy satellites that were launched into polar orbit. Remember, polar orbit is good because the planet is spinning one way. Polar orbit is, is orbiting uh, up and down. So that at, at every point, if you have a camera facing the, the planet, you can film or take pictures. These early spy satellites, uh, they would eventually turn around um, and go back down. Uh, something i didn't demonstrate yet so i believe that's something i'm going to save for next time um is actually getting something out of orbit which is just it's simply a matter of decreasing the velocity uh on one's one side of the orbit or the other and it's a question of when you want to do that particular uh retro burn All right, so going down into May of 1959, and we have Jupiter suborbital. Basically, these are missile tests, more missile tests, more science tests happening in a desert, white sands. Um, and of course, again, the whole time, these, these, there's, there's all these different departments doing, uh, you know, doing their own thing. But the, the science stuff, you, it's obvious that the moon was 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 inevitable i mean when you have a bunch of guys just uh, that have a bunch of rockets that, that they're they're allowed to launch it up into the sky as high as they can go that like let's hit the moon is is going to happen it's just a matter of time uh, let's see we have discoverer four failed to reach orbit blah 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 i think i, think I kind of just did that one too so I'm sort of again. I'm not trying to be super historically accurate with with my uh, my reproductions here. Explorer six, a highly elliptical orbit. That would be interesting on a Thor Abel. But if I start doing that, then I might as well start doing every single satellite that's orbiting. I don't want to. I don't want to go crazy with that. So discover, yeah, these do have retro rockets. So if I did do one of these random other satellites, it would be one of these discoverer satellites, be or uh, yeah, the spy satellites because 
they have retro rockets on them, which allow them to go backward, that uh, to reverse their orbit and then land back down uh, into the sky or into the, the atmosphere. <laughs> I'm getting down into September. Luna 2, September 1959, the first spacecraft to reach the surface of the moon. So this lunar impactor reached the surface of the moon. And uh, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna make that happen. <laughs> this is so ugly. Let's get back to the wonderful R7 build. I know, Looney 1. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to change anything up. Looney 2. We're going to launch that from the desert. Let's just do it. Oh, that's right. I had really bad control on it. Ooh, I'm going to have to... Let's go back. I forgot the the, the Looney one. Uh, basically, once I separated it, I really had very minimal control. Um, I think it would just take putting a, a decent probe uh, computer or like a reaction wheel. Where that can control the reaction wheels, basically. Uh, revert to vehicle assembly. Um, yeah, this entire stage should have one. I only have the small one. Alright, so let me just Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> wow, I really don't remember how I designed this thing. This is so weird. Uh well let's 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 uh <laughs> kinda don't wanna leave it up to guessing. There's another fuel thingy in there. That's all I need to add. Okay. So what this is what's called is a block. They had like a block A, block B, block C, block E, uh stages that they attach to the top part of their their r7 rocket um so what this was was you know a bunch of fuel tanks this should be enough fuel tanks um in order to you know and then another rocket engine just separate it because you know the entire concept of staging you know they were they were just getting the hang of that um now we're not quite at the point where we're we're getting a the maneuvering thrusters. This point, really, like this, was meant to be an impactor. This wasn't meant to land or anything other. It would be too precise. Okay, now again, this was a straight shot to the moon. Um, I might want to actually look up the best angle because there is a, there is like a better angle, obviously. 
uh, mathematically on which where to launch. I'm, I really should remember because I don't think it's changed much since when I played this game and was doing this last time. Or can I simply do it now? No. I'm trying to see if I can actually make a maneuver nude without. Well, while I'm sitting still. Probably. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Basically, what I want is a launch window. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting. I can't really find... I might have to actually look it up. Because usually what you're supposed to do when you get to get to the moon is put yourself into an orbit first and then launch from a particular orbit. However, I am not doing that with this. And I want to make sure I'm not doing this over and over again. Wait until the moon just rises above the horizon. Okay. How can I judge that? If I'm here, well, I guess it'll literally be when I'm close to facing it and not quite. I'm just going to have to guess what. I'm just going to have to judge. All right, let's try it. Not quite over the horizon yet. Well, actually, I'm catching up to the moon, so when it says right over the horizon, that's going to mean it's coming there. So I need to wait for I'm on the other side of it so that it's coming up over the horizon for me. So let me go a little bit more. Right now, if I'm there, it's still over here. I've got to get it behind me, behind my orbit. Not sure what that's, that's technically called. How long have I been doing this at this point? Two hours. <laughs> Two hours playing this game. Probably going to be right before we hit the... All right, I'm going to save it from right here. I'm going to call that A1. That way, I'm not wasting a lot of time. <laughs> we'll just reload it to that. So I know the moon's up there. All right, let's do it. Let's see how far we get. I have to figure out what that is exploding and fix it. <laughs> right, we are ever increasing. So 
So now we can see our Apple apps. It's almost 300. 300 miles up into space. Now 400. Still increasing. I'm getting faster. We're at like 2,000 meters a second rising. Now we're 600. So that engine is now stopped. So we have one engine left to get there. We'll see how this works. Oh. <laughs> it exploded. Oh, it exploded. Why did it explode? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's, uh... Structural failure. Not tank and overheating, separating stage leak through probodium exploded due to overheating. Did the fuel tank hit it? That or did the, the actual? I don't know why. We're gonna have to adjust something here. I can't end the stream until I hit the moon with something. <laughs> So let's try to figure out what exactly happened here. Exploded as soon as this part separated. It said the probe. Now I did have a probe. Actually, since I have been putting a probe at this top part, I'm going to get rid of the one from Oops. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to mess with all that. So the probe that exploded was right in here. I'm just going to have to move it. If I can get in here. There's the probe. Oh, wow. I grabbed the whole fuel tank. So this thing has two fuel tanks. This one and that one stacked together. So I put the fuel between those, and this probe exploded for some reason. So this guy is going to just look like that. That's still pretty good. But I've got to put the probe somewhere still. I guess putting it between the fuel tanks isn't going to fly. I might as well just put it with the main probe if I can. Let's detach that. Probe. This is going to have to be our main one. So what is our main point? This guy. Reroute. Not this anymore. It's going to be this. Okay, so we're going to clip this right into here so that it kind of looks like a, yeah, that's, that's fine. This is why I don't want to do a real solar system modification, because so, otherwise I would be kind of compelled to make it, try to make it look like the, the real versions of these things. But it's kind of fun just to make these little like cartoonish versions. Um, I do want to move this down a bit, if I can. I guess I'll be moving that up a bit, rather. That. I'm also going to do this. Save. All right. Check the staging. All that's going to go off. That's going to separate. You know, if I really want to, why don't I just, I'm going to add some fuel to these suckers too. And the fuel at that point would have been enriched. I don't need solid fuel. I need. So let's add some fuel to those boosters as well. And to this one, why not? 
we're just going to add fuel all around because now I'm worried about this upper stage. I don't want to end up worrying about the upper stage, so that's why I'm going to add this super enriched fuel. Very dangerous. And the Soviets did use very dangerous uh, corrosive fuels um, that the Americans wouldn't use, and uh, that's another reason why the Soviet program did uh, did got so so quick because the fuels they used were super dangerous and they had accidents that killed like entire regiments of of people that were setting these rockets up because if you can see videos of, i mean they, they have hundreds of soldiers they would just go send these young men there to to uh you know each person had their own part they hammer this part into this rocket and put this part on here uh you know hook up this fuel line pump this stuff into here drive this truck full of this this toxic gas that if any of it spills on you you're gonna die <laughs> Um, so let's get this launched. But they died for a good cause. For communism. And I'm not being hyperbolic. But we'll find that out when we get to the first man in space. You can see him giving his speeches. And he'll tell you exactly uh, what his cause is. Okay. Once again, I, the amount of fuel in this, I wonder if I could get into orbit first. So the moon coming over the horizon. For me, I need to fast forward time to a launch window to where this is about lining up here. We'll see. I don't know if I'm gauging that correctly. Where's the moon? I should at least be able to target it. Target. Set as target. Okay. I'm going to wait actually until it's. No. I can see where it is now. Let's see what happens if. Because I'm tempted to wait until it gets over. So I, cause I know if I lean over to this degree, it would put me in sort of an orbital uh, trajectory. As opposed to going the opposite the planet's rotation. But I'm thinking by that point it's not going to matter. Let's see what happens. That's a lot of boosters. That's my all my veneers. I also have the thrust limiters. The thrust I have turned down on these rockets. So I could really speed these things up big time. I don't want to do it too much because look how hot that's getting. <laughs> that's why you can't have you have to throttle it. You have you can't have it super duper fast. Oh, let's see, I know that'll happen. We didn't damage anything too badly.
All right, is this going to separate without destroying anything? All right, let's deploy this. Good. All right, we got our little stage. We have fuel, and we do it. We hit the moon as, as is. Activate the engine. How much fuel do we have? work with so let's see let's try to do a maneuver node here and I don't have a lot of time to do it either I have until I reach the top of my apoaps which is 730 uh, so let's see Oh dear. I might not have enough fuel to do this properly. Huh. 33 second burn it's going to take, as it were. 33 second burn and I would crash into the moon, according to this. I can't appear to change that. I need to make a decision soon. Note in 30 minutes, negative 30 minutes, oh no. It might already be too late. No. might just have to do a burn to give myself some more time to think. All right, so there the, in four minutes, if I burn this way, because I don't have longer than 33 seconds, so it's got to work within... Unless I cheat, which I don't want to do. At this point, if I would have changed my angle just a little bit, I would have been fine. What can I do? Am I already falling? No, I'm still just slowly going upwards. Like this whole time I'm raised, like I'm going up. So that's 33 second burn. Let's do that. up 
if I do something like hold up. Ah, oh, this is terrible. I'm not used to this anymore. This is so bad. Yeah, at this point, there's no way to do it without cheating. In one minute, if I burn like that. I'm reverting to launch. That's it. It's gotta. I don't want to. I don't want. Well, I don't want to I could cheat and add fuel to the thing, but I don't want to do that. I'm gonna try it again. From. I know the moon is there. Because I, I, I can't quite remember like a lot of these sort of the way these things go. <laughs> how fast something goes and relative to the, how fast this uh this thing's moon is rotating. So let's check it out. And uh, these were, I mean, these were similar to the problems they had then. They didn't have a lot of good tracking. They didn't, they were still experimenting with a lot of this stuff in any case. Let's see, so if I launch this out here. All right, now I'm, I'm recalling, because if I do launch in sort almost an orbital way, it's going to go this way, which means it's going to want to wrap back around to where the moon's going to be, and then I can maneuver that way. Yeah, because there is a... They did it in a very strange way, which uh, I might go over it some other, because there's going to be lots of other moon... There are, there are many moon launches that happened prior to the Apollo program. I'm going to launch into this kind of orbit. I'm not going to try to orbit because I'm just going to try to wrap back around and hit the moon first. So a super, basically a super eccentric orbit. And one part of that orbit is going to intersect with the moon. Right now the moon's behind us. So what we're going to basically end up doing, if this works, is circle back around the entire globe and intersect with the moon. 
from the other side. Up. Well, that's gonna fifteen. We're almost in business as long as I move quick. Forty nine seconds. I have a fifteen second burn that if this is looking like it's looking, I will be intersecting the moon and crashing into it. As well as hitting the other side of it. So this would actually succeed in doing the Luna 2 and Luna 3, which took pictures from the other side of the, the moon. Although, I believe those are a return from orbit. I got to check that out. If that happened, then we're going to have to gonna have to do that at some other point. In any case. Have this maneuver to do. So this is going to change our. So right now we're going straight out from the Earth's orbit, or from the Kerbin's orbit rather. Got our little engine here, doing our maneuver. And I know we're going to have to adjust this. Let's see what's happening. It doesn't look like we're, we're at least going far enough out, but. Right, so I'm going to make just the smallest adjustments to where we are intersecting with the orbit of this thing. And we'll watch it play out once I get it. This is basically the equivalent of like many people calculators. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. This is where the maneuver starts. It doesn't matter as long as it's. Well, it does matter, but. <laughs> All right, that should be fine. The idea is to use as little little fuel as possible. So if I see it bulging out all the way past the moon, I know I'm using too much fuel. However, if the maneuver is in a spot where that's where it takes, but if I can do it in the right spot to where, see, as long as I'm going out that far, I can do a maneuver that will use the minimal amount of fuel like that. All right, let's start, let's start again here. This would take us into an orbit which would wrap around the moon and take us and put this in actually in a polar orbit. This is what Luna two. This is what Luna three does. The way that this maneuver works, because remember, this is a sphere. All these 
these globes have spherical uh, gravitational things, uh, gravitational uh, spheres of influence is what it's called. <laughs> um, so when you get into it, it's going to pull you in. And all these things, and all these th things were predicted in the 1700s. Uh, the way these things work mathematically, so it's going to drag this. It would put this into a it would warp around the warped space around the moon, and therefore, once it hit, left then the orbit of the moon, it went back into its orbit back around the Earth. Suddenly, it would find itself in this global. Orbit. This is what they did with the Luna Three. I don't think I'm going to have time to do that. I might do it later as its own video. I don't know. Because I would just shrink this periapsis to where it's it's landing back into Earth, so I could actually. So that's what they did. They sent it around, take pictures of the far side of the Moon, and then it went all the way back around using that this gravity assist. That's what it's called. It uses gravity sort of as a slingshot, and as long as this periapsis was lowered, it would land right back into Earth, and you recover the photograph, the film. Um, but at this point. Again, we still want to do the impactor. And it's going to take a little bit of finagling. We should be able to get an impactor in here. All right, I'm really not good at this anymore. Come on. I'm having these old mods that you probably do it for you. I'll just sink in and say intercept with moon. Bam, click it and it does it. I know I'm not far off. Yeah, we're going to have to go up at that point. Oh, there's a little one. See, that one would bring us back to land on Earth. This would get us within 146 miles of the moon. That'd be interesting. But I still I want to do an impactor. Because if I can get something up to do a maneuver like this, then it should pretty much be easily to do the Luna 3 flyby and then return. But i got to make sure that's what it did. It would only take a few more adjustments to get this going. So I'm gonna keep trying. Let's see, would it be? Nope. It's very weird the way it, that looks like it's actually going through the moon. As soon as the periaps disappears, it's probably going because this is actually showing the middle of the of the moon. All right, well we're gonna have to do this because this is taking way too long. And all right, two minute in two minutes we have a five second burn. That's what all this stuff means. So here we are, and we're only this far away from the planet. Because we're just, it's in relative scale. Our orbit speed is changing just because we're leaving. Like it's, it's only, it's relative between both bodies now. So I'm going to fast forward to about two minutes in. And we're going to do our node burn as. Right direction. So what that stuff I just did was basically tell you what direction to face when you hit your engine to make that make the correct course correction from the delta V, which is your the amount of change in your your everything that you're doing basically. So we just made that burn, which burned up a decent amount of fuel that we have left, and now. As you can see, we are coming pretty close to the moon. 
I'm going to get rid of that. Let's see, if I follow us, we're going to go this way. What is this doing? Apple apps. Just, going, just think it's... Well, let's see what happens if I make another course correction. Exactly. Um, hello. Does it not want me to make a course correction now? What is happening? Maneuver node. We should there shouldn't be any problems. Let's go back to the map. Let me try to follow this. I'm going to go straight this way. Out of maneuver. Oh, why are all the way over there? Not sure what this thing is. Thinks it's showing me. <laughs> it's very strange. I want to add a maneuver, but it won't let me. Except for it will up here. I'm worried if I do something late, like that, that's way later. Um, it's not really going like the, the sooner. Sometimes it, a, a maneuver you do here can really adjust your orbit for all the way over here. Because right now, I'm kind of worried. I'm, I'm not going to get close enough. And it looks like I am. Within two days, I'll find out. But if I don't, then. It's messing up, so I'm just going to fast forward it. Let's see what happens. Let's get closer and closer to the moon. There's the moon. We're going to let us get closer and fast forward. Oh, well, we can't even control this thing anymore. <laughs> so we're going all the way over here still. So we got to go all the way up here. What's that? Two days. Now this this is gonna do very weird stuff. Now we're uh, out. We're gonna be out of the Earth, but it's it's gonna leave the Earth. This is leaving. The Earth's gravity just in time to where when it comes back down, it's going to be affected by the moon's gravity. That's very interesting. There's the moon. So we've just gone really far away from our planet. Where's the planet at? Uh, there's our planet all the way over there. Now the moon's catching up with us. Now, unfortunately, the radio has failed. Maybe just because of the battery. Yeah, well. I'm not above cheating and adding electric charge. 
to the uh, to the machine. I won't cheat and add fuel. That'll be where I'll draw the line so far. Well, we'll see. So we gotta wait until when this thing is now sinking all the way back down to its orbit of Earth. Which is gonna look like this. It's actually gonna get caught in the moon's gravity because the moon's gonna get closer. I kinda wanna show it on both angles. I'm gonna fast forward it there from here. You can see it's slowly closing in now more quickly. Oh, now we've been caught within the moon's gravity. Oh yeah, we've done it. We don't need to make any correction burns. The problem is we can't separate our rockets. That's okay. The Soviet public, the Kurviet public doesn't need to know that. All they know is that the Americans, because the Americans could track this stuff too. Well, the Soviets weren't just, they couldn't, I mean, they weren't just faking this stuff. When they, uh, the Americans could, could tell that they did it and they were smacking themselves in the forehead. So there's the Earth on the right. There's the moon. And we are crashing into this. Kind of wish we could separate our... Hmm. All right, I didn't mess up my orbit. So the orbit is now intersecting with the moon. We will have a successful impact. Ah, it's so lethargic. When will this impact happen? Let's take a look. Let's talk to the calculator. 27 minutes. 27 minutes. All right. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Yeah, let's just fast forward through this. I was just going to leave it, uh, leave it running, but let's just crash this sucker. Let's just do it. All right. It's fast forwarding. Here it goes. I want to make sure I don't go too fast. Just getting it fast enough to... Closing in. We're going 10 times fast. All right, I'm going to slow it down a bit. This is how, this is normal speed. It looks pretty slow, but it's... You're still going 784 meters a second from one body to the other. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> 
just take a look at what's happening. In our orbit, we now we're 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 at the end of a giant, complicated ballistic arc, or series of ballistic arcs. Now that is now it happens to be intersecting with a giant rock in space. Uh, the ballistic arcs, which is just physics, don't really care what's in the way. They're just going to go there. Um, that's what relativity is sort of all about. Um, as far as getting things from one body to another, uh, when it comes to like gravity, gravity assists. Uh, I've often seen the, or I, I like the analogy of a giant trampoline um, or sort of a three-dimensional trampoline or four-dimensional trampoline, rather. You know, if you, you sit a bowling ball on a trampoline, you know, and you put a bunch of marbles around it, then they're going to sink in towards it. So the, um, let's see if I can do some science. I oh, know the electrics, no, no science. We're just impacting. Uh, we're getting closer. I mean, really, we're getting a better view than they had in 1959. I'll tell you that. They weren't cameras on this thing. There was just radio signals letting it know where it, where it went. The cameras came later. There were cameras on the one that orbited it and took pictures. Uh, but the impactor, you know, I don't know if I'm wrong about that. I don't know. It's something to look into if you're really interested. Here we go. We're getting there. Look how fast. Oh. Puff. That was anticlimactic. It just that's just so fast. It just puff, just disintegrated. <laughs> Although you know what. So I did save right before we hit. So I wonder if I can redo it to where we can return this thing back to Earth. Yeah, I just reloaded it before it hits the moon. <laughs> the modern science. Let's see, if I add a little maneuver to, to not hit the moon, let's go off to this direction a little bit. Boom, we're not hitting the moon all of a sudden. Look at that. It's uh, Now we have a moon periapsis of 80 miles, and we're going to swing around it. Um, at this point, it's, then when we leave, it's going to go back here and then go back around here. Oh, and we're hitting the Earth. Look at that. Now if we can adjust it to... That's only with a one-second burn. Wow. I don't even need to add to cheat and add fuel to do that. However, it's going to go plunk straight. I think it needs to get, if this is any chance of this surviving. Uh, it's going to have to get a little bit more, uh, less shallow into the atmosphere. Nope. I don't think it's, it's not budging. Let's do this. Let's go right into the maneuver. What? All right, now we're going to miss the moon. So let's watch us miss the moon. So this is like, this is sort of like lunar, Luna 3 um, that went around. Yeah, far side. Took the pictures. Thumbnail. Configuration was a little different. 
Yeah, so basically it's going to roll around the gravity well created by this giant thing. And now we're returning back to our orbit of our original body. So it looks like we're heading in that direction, which we are. However, once we're out of the moon's influence, watch what happens. I mean, you can see all, all, the, all of these. Uh, the green is where we're going. The, the, the gold here is where we're going to end up. I'm fast forwarding that to the end of the green. That's when we finally leave the influence of the moon. All right, now we're in, gone for the end. The moon's behind us. Get rid of these other. <laughs> All that junk. So now our orbit is back. Kind of, kind of the way we ended up. We took off and our orbit sort of took this giant shape that took us into the intercept the moon. Now we just kind of danced around the moon. And now we're heading right back down to Earth. Because that's, that's uh, yeah. Now if we bump it up a little bit, you know, really see this. I don't like this really shallow. Or not shallow, actually. This is a really, uh, the way we're going to plunge in. It's better to actually give you a little bit more room because if you hit it so fast, the atmosphere it'd probably just be destroyed instantly. So I am going to try to make it a little bit of a correction on on this. Now, in real life, when they did this at the ending of 1959, um, they had done the the proper burns from the beginning and figured out mathematically where it needed to go to hit to get into the gravity well to move and bounce back out of it. And, and go back without these maneuver corrections. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not that prepared. <laughs> what? Now we're out of maneuver. We don't want that. All we want to do is make sure we're going to the atmosphere, the atmosphere a little less. Uh... I, I think. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. And this, we're already going way past. There, it's in an hour. I'm doing it now. <laughs> so it doesn't matter too much. That's it. All right, leaving, we've left the moon. We're heading back to the planet and fast forwarding it. I don't have any parachutes on this thing, so this is not going to survive anyway. <laughs> We're falling back to the planet. All right, the moon and back. The only thing I cheated with was to add some electricity to give it extra electric charge, which it's out of again. I'm going to end it at that. 
Um, I'm going to leave this guy to fall through the atmosphere at its leisure. Uh, this will be uh, our analog for, for the Luna 3 probe, which the, the Russians sent to the other side of the moon and took pictures and sent it back out on a lunar trajectory. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you know, now, now I want to check that because I, I better get that right, right? If I'm like, what am I doing here if, I, if I'm getting that stuff wrong? So here's Luna 2, which we crashed into the moon. We just crashed that into the moon uh, September 12th, 1959. So we successfully launched this probe off of Earth. Um, the Soviets put a copy of this, this soccer ball looking thing. Um, obviously, when this thing hit the moon, it's just going to be flattened. Um, now, that's, obviously, nobody's gone back to nobody we can't go there to, to check it out um they probably figured out where it's landed yeah it looks like we know where these things have crashed this is a, this is a full full-blown map of the moon so it doesn't matter what that scale is um and then so then i just reloaded it and i kind of cheated and the, the luna three um but did this yes yes this is what we also i also just did this as you can see the gravity assist maneuver. Um, so once this thing launched from Earth, and when it got down to the gravity well of the moon, it was able to swing back around. Because remember, this thing is like it's a bowling ball sitting on a trampoline. Um, but you have a giant trampoline, which is the Earth's uh, electromagnetic, or the, the, the universe's electromagnetic uh, fields. or And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything in between it, which is creation. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so this thing swings back around, and we, we just witnessed the way that that works, uh, and then now we're, we're returning back to Earth. Now, my version is probably not going to survive <laughs> the return. Did this actually survive, or what? Experiment was to obtain photographs. Imaging system consisted of a dual lens, automatic film processing, and a scanner. The lenses and a camera were blah, 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 blah. Camera was fixed, pointing wherever the spacecraft was fixed. Luna was the first successful. So how did we get it back? How? It was tempered. It was radiation hardened. It just simply returned it from a TV. So they didn't, they didn't return it back. Is this thing still in orbit? I wonder if this is still in orbit. Looks like it is. No, it decayed in 1960. So this thing stayed up and so, all right. So okay. So I, I this is more. I've done this more accurately than I believe. The only difference is I used the same launch. Uh, very cool. Actually, no, not cool, because in that case, this thing shouldn't be returning back to the planet. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Well, actually, it, it does return back to the planet, like I just said, in uh, 1960, so that's fine. So, yeah, so that's the... And this is, by the way, if you've ever seen the Apollo 13 movie, I remember watching that as a kid and being like, well, as a teenager, and being like, what, what? It didn't really make sense to me how they thought that it was the easiest thing to do was was to allow it to on a what it's called a free return trajectory um because i didn't really understand that you know the the, the notion of this the, the the giant moon having this this gravity well in which whenever it gets something gets closest to it is going to get pulled into it in order to change its its uh its velocity or and when i say well it, it's relative velocity it's angular velocity it's angular momentum um and and move it and actually make it go into another direction going back the way it came um and uh yeah that's what we just saw here and we'll we'll see more of that um so all right so we'll just this will be the simulation of, of luna 3 plunging back through space uh in a cup in a little while because it looks like they left it in space and this thing transmitted television signals back to uh to the soviets of the far side of the moon and that was I think let me see what year that that happened again maybe 
5 30 is a great cutoff time okay 1959 in space flight looking all the way down to december yeah more more of these the final thing indeed was the we only had a, a failed pioneer mission another failed uh, discover a mission so, yeah soviets making big on the moon a couple explorer satellites but yeah circumlunar trajectory happening here's another picture of it goes into orbit launches around switches back around there we go circumlunar trajectory and we are entering the atmosphere again and when this explodes, people, I bid you adieu. God bless. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus saves. He's the rock. He's going to return. Amen. Take care. Peace. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Red, I love you. Jim, I love you. Tricky Mick, take care. All you guys. Wins. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's fun. And I'll see you all. I'll try to check out uh, Discord soon. Peace.